Good day everyone, my name is Maria Kondzielska and you are watching Poland Daily Culture. Sir Roger Scruton was a philosopher, public commentator and an author of over 40 books. He also became a very dear friend of Poland. He has left us recently after a struggle with lung cancer. Today with me in the studio is Jonathan Price, one of his former students and now a doctor in philosophy. Jonathan, thank you for being with us. Thank you. But before we start with the interview, let's hear what Sir Roger has to say. We have seen the growth of an extraordinary number of new subjects in the university, uh, in which it, the pursuit of truth seems to be secondary to something else. Uh, the other thing being the pursuit of some kind of political conformity. Uh, if you take a, a subject like women's studies, um, uh, now, I know this is a controversial issue, but perhaps it can be talked about freely in this room. You can't talk about it freely in America, on the whole. Uh, anyway, there, there is a subject. It's very difficult to imagine that you would succeed in that subject if you didn't have, either at the outset or certainly in the conclusion, feminist opinions. We know that Sir Roger Scruton engaged in political debate and he was a conservative thinker, very influential in Britain and also in Poland. But before we start to discuss his philosophical views, at first let's learn how did you both meet? Yeah, I was thinking about this. I, I think we met in 2003, although I might have reconstructed the memory after we met again in 2006. Uh, we met in Oxford. I was over for a summer program um, fellowship, and it actually was in, in Oriel College th uh, through an American foundation. And there were all kinds of thinkers from around Europe and from America. And he, uh, he, I believe, was one of them. Or he showed up for drinks at some point. But at some point, this still uh, ruddy-haired uh, man came, and everyone said, oh, that's Roger Scruton, that's Roger Scruton, that's Roger Scruton. And I had a brief acquaintance with him. A few years later, after I'd moved to Europe, uh, we, together with some other uh, conservatives from Europe and the United States, started the Center for European Renewal. And uh, that was, that's a, a set of meetings of conservative intellectuals uh, that um, meets once a year in a different European city. And he, he was one of the forces from Britain who helped get that, get that started. And so we collaborated for um, the past 14 year meetings, 14 years, 14 meetings on that. And what kind of intellectual or tutor he was? Oh, we've had rumors about his dictatic ways in leading students. Are it true? Later, I became his his student as a, a graduate student when he when he took a position at uh, Blackfriars at the University of Oxford, and I, I knew I knew more or less what I was going to get from him because we'd had acquaintance by that point for about about six seven years, uh, and I knew it would be uh, it would be self-effacing and he would he would um, deflect attention away from himself and toward the ideas and toward the, the real stuff of, of, um, of thought and toward the ideal which he was he was always interested in uncovering uh, but I also knew that he he was good at suffering fools but he he was a man with a real first-class mind and so almost any student he had would be ignorant on many things that he wasn't ignorant on. So he, he dealt with that very well, with humor, with comments, with always letting the student know that there was further to come in order to, to be as good as one, one could be as a philosopher. So he showed you the way to develop somehow, that there is, uh, that there is some goal you should be reaching. Yeah, I think the, the pushback he had against modern progressive education is that uh, contemporary progressive education basically wants to educate everyone, but it's unclear why. Maybe for democracy or participation or some other good, and those are often real goods. Uh, but he really understood older model of, of self-development. And so th his goal was, in a sense, uh, like the Germanic Bildung or the Greek Erete, you know, this excellence or the old romantic idea in England of becoming the best that you can be as an individual person. His educational philosophy and his model of tuition was based explicitly on, on you 
understanding who you really are and, and becoming that, not by studying yourself, by studying as much as one can of the, of the rest of the world. Yes, I understand. Uh, so one can say that Roger Scruton revived conservative back from ashes at the time when conservatism was thrown upon in academia. And uh, how did you personally see it? And were there students, for example, rebelling against him and telling, uh, I don't know, leaving his classes and telling that he's intolerant or... Well, not routinely, because in, in Oxford, no one has to show up for most of the lectures. Your, your uh, instruction and your uh, assessments are mostly in the tutorials, so one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two, -on uh, and it, or sometimes even three, but they're small settings. Uh, and uh, lectures are meant to uh, enrich, enrich the student in uh, broad knowledge, and so students of Oxford are more or less welcome to go to any lectures they want to. But you self-select. So when you got, we got into a room in philosophy of music or in, in one of his other classes or in aesthetics or, or something of that sort, the, the students came in knowing what they were getting. So if there were protests, they happened within the boundaries of a, a, you know, a seminar or an, an intellectual conversation rather than students standing up and running out of the room or um, no platforming or something of that sort. So he gathered people around him who were interested also in, or he kind of renewed them, the instincts of conservative thinking, which a lot of us have, but Roger Scruton was able to put them also in, in words, which, uh, which I think is not, was not that common at the time. Well, I mean, conservatism historically is not really the, the party of thinkers. Conservatism tends to look around and say, there are good things, we can identify, and we want to uh, preserve them. Now, of course, it takes some thought to determine which are the good and which are less good and which are bad, but it, it's not, it's not a, uh, a, historically, everyone from Edmund Burke, who had a great mind, but who was not an intellectual and who was not a philosopher in the strict sense. He wasn't one of the French philosophes, for instance, in, of that style. Um, you know, until through the 19th century, into the 20th century, conservatism was, was a party of, of the settled community trying to persist. And in Britain, there, there have been very few um, overtly and uh, expressly conservative um, intellectuals. And so, in a sense, he stood up and said, I, I can... I can complete the trick. I can be both conservative and an intellectual, and I can show you, ordinary persons in Britain, why most of what you believe about your own society is, is true, and why much of it should be preserved. Yeah. And so he, it's a bit of an oddity. Yeah. I mean, intellectuals from the time of Plato were often uh, uh, revolutionaries. I agree, especially philosopher has this philosophy, element, yeah. <laughs> which <laughs> that actually never works out in politics, especially. So I understand that why they should be kept away from politics. And the Conservative Party in Britain is not, I mean, it, it's a party that's almost never known a thought that it couldn't avoid thinking about. It's just, it's just not a party of deep thought. And so he was always as the, the, the resident intellectual or of the conservatives in an odd position because it was a party, as far as I understand, that thought, well, we don't really need intellectuals. It's nice if we have them or if they're conservatives, but we don't really need them to do what we're doing. To summarize his um, basic of his thought, just in one sentence to say, uh, who, if you could put it this way, who is a conservative thinker. It's probably better to just uh, to appeal to examples because it, it, it doesn't, it, I don't think it admits of a type in the same way that a, a communist thinker might or as a um, Christian theologian might, where there's, there's a very clear body of thought with a tradition of reflection, with schooling, you know, if you want to become a a certain kind of Marxist, there's plenty of faculties you can go to. If you want to become a, a theologian, you pick, you know, pick your confession, and then there's a way to train. But to become a, you know, a conservative intellectual, I think one has to really study human nature carefully. 
And again, that's not something that obviously has a tradition. So philosophy used to do it and sometimes still does. Uh, but some of what was philosophy is now natural sciences. And some of what was once philosophy is now politics. So conservative intellectuals tend to be um, students of uh, human nature, broadly speaking. And they tend not to uh, look for answers to human nature outside of what can be uh, found in the experience of living. Now, most conservatives uh, historically have it admitted that part of living involves God. Radical intellectuals will sometimes say, uh, yes, we're t so ut utilitarians or certain kind of uh, communists, uh, certain um, naturalists will we'll say, oh, well, we're just talking about life. We're, we're the ones who are really talking. Yeah. So conservatives tend to have as first principles something like the reality and existence of God, the reality of corporate persons like the nation or the church or the family and other things that are thought to be, have substantial existence in the world. So in a world that has myself, family, um, nation, uh, civilization, God, history as, as real entities and eventually as moral entities, it makes sense. If we subtract all of those things from the world, then it doesn't make any sense. Then, then something like uh, you know, the, the materi a material dialectic makes much more sense uh, than, than that. I think it's a good punchline to say that the conservative thinkers studied the nature of human nature. And that was Sir Roger Scruton was doing all his life. And thank you for watching Poland Daily Culture.